Hello, I'm Dr. Lawrence W. Moore, and welcome to Learning Synthesis with Pure Data, Series 2, Episode 4. In this episode, we're going to be adding a modulation oscillator to our LWM rack setup. And also, before we do that, I want to make an announcement. There was an issue with some of the modules before this episode that I was experiencing, where when using pitch bend or some of the controllers, I would hear the audio stutter a bit. I originally thought that was the playback of um, things while I was using the screen recorder and recording my voice audio separately in the lessons. But it turns out that that was actually something LWM Rack was doing. And so I found a fix that I was able to implement. Basically, I changed the way it saves parameters. To the user, it'll still seem the same. Basically, it'll be saving your parameters as you go. The thing is, it'll be doing that every second rather than every single time a new parameter comes in. When using controllers and stuff, that kind of gummed up the works and made it stutter. But with it happening every second, I've tested it out. We don't get any stuttering anymore when using the pitch bend or controllers. So I believe that problem has been fixed. But since you'll be there, like uh, putting in parameters and changing things and stuff, since a second will probably pass before you close the software, um, you're not going to lose any of your parameters. So things, for all intents and purposes, will appear the same to the user. So I'm not changing any of the videos, but I have put the fix in to all the previous downloads. So people who have been going through the series from this point forward, um, won't be encountering that issue. Uh, those of you who have some of the downloads from before, since this is a new lesson and I include the whole package in the download, you'll basically, by downloading this lesson, have all the new fixed modules. So, that being said, uh, let's get on with this lesson. Okay, so I'm here at my website. Those of you who have been following the series will probably know I like to start here just to show you that at lwmmusic.com you go to Learning, Learning Synthesis with Pure Data. Series 1 is a beginner's guide to pure data and synthesis, culminating in the building of a modular synthesis by the end. And Learning Synthesis with Pure Data 2 is this series where we're building the LWM rack uh, modules, putting them together as I release them. And we're basically beta testing them. This is the last lesson, lesson three. With this lesson, there will also be two downloads. One is the package of the software as it is at this time. And the other one is the package of the software plus a patch file with an example in it. I'd like you to keep the, um, the packages with the blank patch file just so you can build from scratch whenever you want. Now at the uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash LWM music, if you go to the playlist, you can also find the videos in order here. The first series plus two episodes of Pure Data Patches, which are just my single patch releases. And then here we are, Series 2 begins. We have three episodes, and this will be the fourth one. So that's how you can catch up with things. If you have not seen Lesson 1 of Series 2, you will want to see it before going on to this episode. So anyway, I'm going to open up the example folder here, and I have a patch pre-made to show you how this module works. The module that we're doing today is this one here. It's the VCMO. It's the modulation oscillator. Right now I have MIDI in basic here. It's feeding frequency to the VCO and gate to two different ADSRs. I'm only using one at this point. And then I have the signal coming out of the VCO into the AM in of the VCMO and I have the AM checked off here 
which means we're in amplitude modulation mode. And this is how you have to do it. If you want to do amplitude modulation, you got to take the signal out of the VCO into the AM inlet of the VCMO, and then turn on AM here. And then when you do that, the signal can then go out to an envelope or straight out to the audio out. I have it going to an envelope so the notes start and stop. There we go. So the note has a fairly quick attack. Let's make it a little slower. Fairly long decay. Shorten that a bit. And then here's the sustain level. And the healthy release time to it. So what we're hearing modulation wise is amplitude modulation at the frequency that you select here. And you have an amplitude control here for the amount of modulation. Now if I turn this all the way down, we just hear a stable tone. So it lets the tone pass through, it just reduces the amount of modulation. And both the amplitude and frequency parameters have inlets on the patch bay here. I can, for example, take the mod out from MIDI in BASIC and go to the frequency in here on the PCMO. So now my mod wheel will, well, it will change the frequency as soon as I turn off auto map on my keyboard. There we go. No audio stuttering, because I fixed that issue. Um, and I put that fix in all the other downloads. So anyone that's starting the series from here on out has the fixes already made. And it doesn't change the way it use the, um, the modules or interpret the videos at all. So that was just a quick fix I popped in. So anyway, I also have some controls here for higher frequency modulation. It, when you're on this, the range here, even though this is 0 to 1 really, it multiplies it by 20, so it ends up being 0 to 20. And when you click on this, now it has a range of 0, well, 20 to 200. And that's when you get into the uh, Tambral range of the amplitude modulation or ring modulation. And then the next one goes from 200 to 2000. And the next one goes from 2000 to 20,000. Only the first bit of that is really useful. Get too high, you don't hear it anymore. The sidebands get too high in frequency to hear. So anyway, I'm going to put it back on the basic 0 to 20. Um, you have different waveforms here, like this is a triangle wave. I'm going to um, turn this up because the mod wheel went down and turned it off. Between the sign and the uh, triangle, it's not a huge difference that you hear. This one's a square wave. This will be like on off. You can change pulse width modulation here. Turn that amplitude down, it'll actually sound a little smoother. Still a little click in there. But anyway, a little smoother. And then the sawtooth. When you go on 
higher speeds. It just sounds noisier. But anyway, that's that bit of it. And I do still have the noise here, although I'm wondering if I should keep it. It's not as useful. Because I don't hear it coming in. Actually, I did before. But you see, it's not very big. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that out. I'm not hearing it at all now. I should be. Although I guess the noise um, is probably too fast for it to really get much of an effect. It just kind of like blots it out. But in any case, uh, that's something with times that just is a beta release. I'll figure on either making it work or getting rid of it. But in any case, um, that should show about as much as that. Now let's do frequency modulation. So what I'm going to do is disconnect down here. Because frequency modulation, you have to run the signal differently. This is our audio output. Um, basically, instead of routing the VCO into here, VCO goes through the output chain directly. It does not go into the modulation oscillator. So I'm going to hook this output here up to both the left and right inlets over here so we hear it on both speakers. So there's the VCO back again. Now if we want to modulate frequency, we can do two things here. I can connect directly to the FM in here. And then let me go back to... Uh... Oh, i got to turn off AM here. There we go. And let's set an amplitude value. Oh, I'm on the high frequency, so we just hear some buzzing. There we go. So this multiplier up is the lower value. Now, we also have this envelope here. I can pass through it before going here, and what this will do is control the amount of modulation being sent over time. Since I do have the gate going to both ADSRs, this ADSR will control just this VCMO output. So let me turn this up so we can be sure to hear something significant. I'm going to give the delay time some more time there lower the sustain so what you'll hear is initially a larger amount of frequency modulation then it'll go down when i say a larger amount i mean a larger range of frequency sweep <laughs> And of course, I could take this and do the following. Remember from the ADSR uh, episode, if you turn this one up, you now have some sustain time to it. Multiply by this factor here, which is 2,000 milliseconds or 2 seconds. So this will be a fraction of 2 seconds. Let's put it up halfway so it's a little longer. <laughs> And then it goes away. There's a release time here. Let me turn that up, turn this down. Fades out a little better there. So, that's frequency modulation, of course. I can use it with the multiplier and get more of a timbral change. Let's decrease the, de the decay time. How 
about a little bit more. So anyway, there we go. So that should give you some more to play with. As I said before, this is beta releasing so and beta testing. So let me know if there's some issues to address. And leave some comments if you have any in the comment section below. And we'll work on making this a better and better package as we go. All right, so I'll see you next time on Learning Synthesis with Pure Data. Series 2.